Scott, Kyle Shell been driving from McKeesport to Cumberland. That way or that way? It's kind of cool this morning. It's in the 50s, probably 57, 58. I'm cozy under a JRB Stealth. No sniveler. Sun's up. This is our Stealth Camp. There's a Jimmy Neutron's rig. He's using a beautiful tarp provided by OES. Thank you, Brian. Pennsylvania, well, oh. in 15 feet. <laughs> About a mile, maybe two miles from the Eastern Continental Divide. This is the view, I guess the view, in this section of the Allegheny Passage. This is the longest tunnel on the Allegheny Passage. It's over 3,400 feet long. And luckily for us, the Park Service has provided lighting. Uh, Jimmy's studying the big savage tunnel. Guys, after uh, two days of riding, well, it's not really two days. It's yesterday evening and this morning. I'm um, approaching the Eastern Continental Divide. And Garmin's reading 23, 41, 42. And you can see I've got just a few more feet to go. This is the highest point on the Allegheny Passage. And after we reach the top, we've got a 20 mile downhill. Sweet. The 23 or 27 miles of the Allegheny uh, Passage go through this park. Last night stealthing was easy, so I think it's going to be more interesting. I've been stealth camping in Ohio Pile State Park and this is the Yogue River uh, about 20 yards away is uh, the hammock set up ah uh, Medicine Man stealth site still on the Fargo you got to do a little single track yesterday Uh, still in the war bonnet, single layer, the blackbird. Tiwa summer. This time, sporting Jacks are better's stealth no sniveler. Campers, if you notice, 
No metal racks. No panniers. I'll tell you a little bit more about that once I get everything loaded up for today's ride. I got this glow from hell super neon camelback for use on the KLR. But hey, it works on a bicycle too. Jimmy Neutron in his stealth sight. A double war bonnet. It's got one of a. Which underquilt is that? That's Lee's summer underquilt. Inside, Jimmy's using a Nunatech Arc Edge rated to 45 degrees. Jimmy's uh, showing that sometimes you just use what you can find when it comes to trees. This spot, uh, it's nice, it's stealthy, it's by the river, but uh, good hanging trees were minimal. This is uh, Jimmy Neutron's ride. He's using a Trek 8000. That's an aluminum bike. Uh, lifetime warranty on the frame. He'll probably never get to use that. Pretty solid bike. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm gonna contrast two different systems for carrying gear. Okay, guys, this is the Epic Designs system for bike camping no use of metal racks which have weight you notice i've got an event stuff sack it's got the entire house under quilt top quilt hammock tarp and some camp clothes and the handlebar bag which i'm pointing at right here straps which hold your stuff sack on doesn't wiggle does it move uh, about mm, five miles at home testing so far 70 miles on this trail it's stable notice these little standoffs uh, to keep the bag away from your cables this is uh, the epic designs handlebar bag great for uh, quick neat items uh, I got these little saddlebags there's one on the left and right off of eBay for six bucks this one's got the uh, charger USB for the GPS. That charger will also work for the uh, phone. Uh, here's the uh, Garmin. Over here is the other saddlebag. Uh, I've got the phone in that saddlebag on the right. Uh, video camera will go on the left. On this trip, I added this little Yan bag primarily for my glasses, but my wallet's found itself in there too. On the back, uh, again, frames are gone, and this is the Epic Designs seat post bag. This model is the Versace. It's the largest one. Uh, I've got my food bag sticking out. I want to show you guys. Uh, uh, it's still three days of food in there, and I'll show you when it's buckled up here in a second. Down in the apex of the seat post bag, I do have a couple of items of camp clothing, and I've forgotten my seat. My little sit pad, the thermal rest, but you can see it rolled up and crammed in there. I use that. Okay, here's the uh, Epic Design seat post bag, cinched down. It doesn't sway. You see it attaches to the seat rails and to your seat post, uh, well off the uh, rear tire. And that replaces yet another metal rack. Say it again. Hi, Hillbillies. <laughs> okay, what's the name of this place? Valley Dairy. And everyone doing the Great Allegheny Passage should eat here, right? They should. Come see me. There he goes. Mile post 100. That wonderful breakfast is finally kicking in from the Valley Cafe, thank goodness. I've had rubber legs ever since. This is the Cedar Creek Campground. Milepost 110 on the Allegheny Passage.
Russ Hutton, who you to and I am. the end of our Great Allegheny Passage experience, uh, ending at 132 miles. Uh, our trip was Cumberland, Maryland to McKeesport. Uh, the trail does go a little further, but it's kind of under construction between here and Pittsburgh. So this is our version of the GAP. Thanks for coming along.